Hi everyone, let's talk about Anachrony Fractures of Time. If you want to know more about just how the game plays and stuff, there's an overview video, there's a playthrough video, and you can go and look at the campaign page for all of the final stuff. That's all in the description. So, it adds quite a lot to the game. I haven't actually played any of the mini expansions that have come out before. I know there's the Doomsday one in the base game box, and I haven't got the Exosuit little expansion that comes with more things than just the minis as well. So this is the first kind of alteration to Anachrony I've played, so I can't compare it to those but it really changes the whole feel of the game. It's not just an expansion that adds more things, more buildings and super projects and stuff, which it does add that stuff, but it kind of fundamentally changes the structure of a worker placement game in that you aren't just, you are still kind of racing for these spots, especially when the collapsing capital tiles come out towards the end and certain bonuses are one-offs, but generally throughout the game now, there isn't such a mad rush, like if you need to build this round, there's not necessarily this urgency that you have to do it with your first action, you have to be the first player, you have to do these things. Sometimes, you know, it will help to do that, and you can do other things later, but there is this whole extra dimension to blinking in that, and if you haven't seen the overview or anything, blinking is where you can take one of your already placed workers, as your action for the turn, you take one of your already placed worker exosuit combinations from the main board, and you can go somewhere else with it. And that gives you, you know, an extra use out of the same exosuit and worker, so you can make do with fewer workers or bringing fewer exosuits out with you for that round. But it also frees up the space as well, maybe for somebody else, but maybe for you. Maybe you're going to get to go back there when it's your turn again. And so you can kind of, you are playing a different game of not just what do the other people want and are they going to be going for the same things as me and do I need to get there first? But kind of judging, okay, which, which are the ones that are, that are going to move? Which are the ones that they're going to just use to, to block there? You know, first, first player can change hands more than once in a round now because these spots aren't you know, static anymore, and anything could come available again later on. And adding to that is the new valley board, in that you, you those spaces are for some of the new stuff. So the new harvester type of work, which is a cool new thing. It's basically a genius, so they can act as anybody, but they don't get the bonuses. You know, a genius can pretend to be an engineer and get the engineer bonus of a space that they go to. Harvester can go to any of the specific spots, but doesn't get any extra bonus and there's some special spaces where only they can go but blinking to the valley board is an is an interesting thing because you can blink from the normal board to the valley board but not the other way around so sometimes you'll really need say energy cores or the new flux cores to be able to blink the the resource that allows you to do that you will need to go to this board often to get those things or to get more harvesters or the new upgrades of leave those for a second, but you, you really want to go on this valley board and you know it's it's just as tight as everywhere else. You know, in in a two player game, there's only one spot for the the getting flux or energy cores. And there is a world council action where you can go if that's full up. But there is, you know, there's just as much competition on this board, but it feels somewhat of a waste to go there with your main action because you can't blink off there. And maybe you weren't going to and it's still worth going there and if you haven't got any flux cores you kind of, you, you need this kind of economy to, if you're, if you're down to one and you want to keep blinking, you probably want to blink to the space that gets you more flux cores so you can keep it going because if you end up with none, it kind of puts a, puts a stop to your engine and you kind of have to work those resources back up so you can keep doing it a lot. And because it's an acrony, blinking uh, does involve some risk. You know, you're messing with uh, the, the space-time continuum. So any time that you do that, you're going to have some risk. And here it's glitches and they are... A really cool thing as well, because they do get in the way, they can block buildings, they can block your exosuit spaces, end game bonus conditions, and maybe you're not that bothered and you can leave glitches there because you're making up the points elsewhere. There are actions, harvester only actions, where you can remove those glitches as well. But it's a nice, an, another nice push your luck thing that, you know, you, you can keep upgrading your fracture board so you've got less chance of getting those glitches. You can keep removing previous glitches or flux cores that build up in your fracture device to lower the risk of that, or you can just really go for it and maybe try and get a building that mitigates them. You know, there's there's new buildings that have come out. I think there's there's only one new super project, but it relates to the new uh, the new glitches and things. And this is this is just in my prototype that I'm talking about, by the way. I don't know what's going to be in the final thing. Campaign page will tell you all that stuff. 
what else is new for it? So there's the valley board, there's the harvesters, there's the, the upgrades, okay. I briefly mentioned them. There are now upgrade cards that you can get that are, you know, permanent little powers. So, you know, labs for you are discounted for the rest of the game. Uh, you, your next super project requires one fuel breakthrough and you don't have to put it on your player board. You can build a building off your player board and it only costs these few resources. They are nice. They're nice ways of you bending the rules just for yourself. And they often give you a scoring bonus as well for the end of the game for satisfying certain things. So the one that makes labs cheaper for you reward you for having a load of labs and then maybe you can combine that with the one that lets you build off your board and you build a lab with it and now that's worth a load more points and so they they cost resources as well and you need to go to the new valley board to go and get them but they are a nice diversion as well or a nice enhancement they're a diversion to maybe give you a new idea for a strategy but they can also enhance a strategy you're already doing so for example, it, it came out a little bit late in our game, but my path really wanted me to go for life support buildings. There is an upgrade in there that gives you bonuses for having a load of life support buildings. So these things can really gel together if you work it all out properly. So <laughs> yeah, that's just all of the new stuff. And there's beautiful new plastic minis for the mechs and things. And yeah, I haven't really played with those before because I said I haven't got that pack. I'm not mentioning it over and over and again to get one, wink. But uh, yeah, they are a really, really beautiful. Even even in their 3D prototype form, it is really satisfying slotting your worker in those rather than just placing them on a cardboard token. Although yeah, you're having the same gameplay experience either way. So just in general, I think it's a really, really fantastic expansion. I haven't, I can't compare it to the other ones that have come out so far, but it, I really like this new way of thinking that it's that it forces you to do that you are not just doing because because worker placement is a fantastic mechanism you know it's why it is so widespread it is a great way of giving interaction without without it being negative that you are stealing from someone or destroying someone's things there is interaction in these one use spaces that once somebody got has gone there that's it for the round so you need to get your priorities right and get ready to switch to plan B when somebody goes in a space that you really, really needed. Here, that still exists. The, the worker placement is still there, but there is a whole nother thing of the mind games of, will they move out of this space? Or I want to blink and get out of this space, but I know you really need that space and I don't want to let you in there just yet. So I might not blink yet, but then does that get in the way of my plans? And then a space you weren't really thinking about suddenly opens up and then does that mean that I can rethink everything that I was doing because now this thing that I thought was gone is suddenly available again? It's, yeah, it, it, it suits the game very well because uh, it is, uh, it does feel like you are wrapping yourself in circles sometimes trying to strategize something that's, you know, is really dependent on what the players in the end do. But yeah, it's fun trying to think of all of these crazy permutations that you can go through. And it still has, you know, it, it still fits in very nicely with this, uh, with the time traveling theme. And I know that I've, I've seen, you know, criticisms of anachrony that you know, the, the time travel system is really just a loan and you need to pay it back or get penalized and stuff. Yeah, you, you can strap a lot of things down to their, their core elements and make them seem not as good, but it's the package as it exists that really, really works together. For me anyway, I really like this. Uh, I really like the new path as well. I haven't talked about them. There's a whole new path to play as and they're people that didn't want to follow the other paths and they just want everybody to come together. That's another nice uh, thematic part to it, but they get to manipulate all of this new stuff as well. They get uh, you know bonus actions to do the, the basically the fracture actions that you need a harvester for, they can use a scientist on them instead and have an easier time. And they have a much easier, their, their A side anyway, they have a much easier time of getting their evacuation condition. They just need a building of each type and then they get extra points for upgrading their fracture device that they probably will do because they have bonus actions to be able to do that. A really nice extra touch and reach obviously appreciates any time a game puts a purple player color in there. Anyway. I think I've spoken enough about Anachrony, Fractures of Time. There's a playthrough there. I did a playthrough of the original Anachrony. I did a first impressions of the original Anachrony as well. Watch all of that stuff if you want to find out more. If you've played this, if you're interested in this, let me know. Let's have a chat about it. I've played it now. We can have a chat. The ending fizzled out, didn't it? Thank you for watching this. There's loads more videos with better endings than this. And 
yeah, you can watch them on the channel. There's hundreds of playthroughs now, first impressions for things, overviews, all sorts. Anyway, thank you for watching this, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye.